Now, we will take a few moments to review the function of the surgical instruments and supplies in the Sim Suture module, and then describe how the instruments should be held and used. This is a 5-inch Hager needle holder, as it is sometimes called a needle driver. In looking at this instrument, a few characteristics jump out at you. One, it has a blunt end. This prevents it from damaging any tissue that it may bump into. The width of the jaws also provides a little extra surface area at the end of the instrument to firmly secure or hold the needle. Note that the joint of the instrument is offset so that the movement arm of the jaws is quite short. This allows considerable pressure to be applied to the needle, ensuring its stability in the jaws while the suture is being placed. The surface of the jaws is serrated with small triangular grooves. This increases the coefficient of friction to lock the needle in place. This instrument should be held by placing your thumb and ring finger into the rings on the handle. Your digits should not be inserted beyond the distal interphalangeal joint, which will allow you to disengage your finger and thumb easily from the rings if necessary. The index finger can be placed close to the joint of the needle driver, which will allow better control of the tip. Note that when the needle holder is held in this fashion, there are unlimited number of motions of the tip that are possible. The needle should be placed in the jaws of the needle driver, as close to the tip as possible. For these beginning exercises, we will place it in the jaws with a perpendicular angle. The needle should be grasped at a point two-thirds to three-quarters the distance away from the tip. In most cases, the needle should be placed in the needle driver so the point faces you, as you will always try to sew towards yourself. This is a pair of Adson forceps. Look at the tip. Note that there are two teeth on one side and one on the other. These teeth interdigitate when the forceps are closed. The purpose of the teeth is to firmly grasp skin or fascia without crushing the tissue. Forceps are held like a pencil, which allows precise movements of the tip. Never hold these forceps in the palm of your hand as it will limit the control that you have over the tips. Since there are teeth on the end of the forceps, they easily hold skin with a minimal application of force. As we proceed with these exercises, you should remember that these are tissue forceps and should rarely be used for retrieving needles after difficult throws in bulky tissue. These are suture scissors. You can see that the tip at the end of the blades are different. One is sharp and the other rounded. The sharp end is used to pry under skin sutures to help cut them. Scissors are held like the needle holder with the thumb and ring finger going a short distance into the rings on the handle. Skin sutures are usually cut by putting the sharp blade under the suture and gently cutting it. The ends of ties or knots are cut by separating the blades of the scissors apart by a few millimeters. The V created by the separation is then brought up against the suture gently and the blades close while rotating the scissors slightly. This is a task that you will easily learn as we cut ends off of our sutures in the exercises that follow. There are two scalpels in this module. The larger blade is a number 10 blade and is used for making large, straight incisions. Since the cutting edge is on the long side of the blade, this scalpel is usually held like a violin bow. The scalpel is gently brought along the skin to make the incision. The smaller blade is a number 15 blade and is used for fine cuts during excisions. This scalpel is usually held like a pencil for more precise movements. The cutting surface is the rounded part of the blade near the tip. Always put the cover on the scalpel after using. Let's look at the needles provided with this module. Look carefully at the 3O nylon with the 30 millimeter needle. Note that it has a curve that is about 3 eighths of a circle. Also note that the cross section of the needle is not round except right at the point where it is swedged onto the suture. Actually, the cross sectional shape of the needle is a triangle. Each corner of the triangle is slightly sharpened which allows it to easily traverse skin and fascia. The other advantage of the triangular shape is that it is held more securely by the needle holder to keep the needle from moving as the suture is placed. The next video segment will demonstrate the basics of placing a simple suture.